I appreciate the word, the living word that's here, the anointing. The Lord's been impressing upon my heart so many months that it's not by might, it's not by power, it's not by how loud somebody can say something or how fierce they can look or anything like that. It's not by might or power, but it's by the Spirit of God. It's by His Spirit. And I know that there is the Spirit of His might. I know that when you have the Spirit of God, you have the Spirit of God in might. You have that might within you. You have that power of might. You, ha you, have, you ask for wisdom, He gives you that Spirit of wisdom. There's deception on every hand. There's deception within. And that's why that the pastors and the shepherds is set over you is to try to warn you to uh, these different things that comes upon us and against us. And, and you, you know, many times the Lord, it's the Lord's Spirit in the shepherd that sees the wolf coming. He sees them from afar off or he sees them getting close by and he begins to try to warn and we can either listen or we don't listen if we don't listen we we just have to settle for the circumstances for the things that happens to us and so I want us to really reach out with me this morning I'll try not to hold you too long it's according to how the spirit moves upon us and I tell you, we're living in an hour right now where the devil, as a roaring lion, is going about and he's seeking whom he may devour. And it don't, he's not worried about the age. He's not worried about whether you're rich or poor. He just wants the souls that he can take into hell. And so he's going about as a roaring lion. And he's trying to, to deceive us. And so we don't want to be deceived, do we? Just lift up your hands and praise him. And I'm telling you, uh, we need to reach out for the Lord this morning. There's safety in the arms of Jesus. There's safety in his hand this morning. We know that he's holding on to our hand because we don't know the day nor the hour. We don't know when the thief's going to come. We don't know the day and the hour that the Lord is going to come or call somebody home, but we need to be found ready. And Jesus Christ is our life giver. And when we come to him and we fall in the altars and we seek his face, when we hide in a closet somewhere, or when we kneel at our bed or when we pray in the car or when we pray out under a shade tree or we come into the house of God where he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. When we enter into that prayer just between that talk just between you and God between me and God I want you to know that there is the hiding place there is the refuge there is the strength there is where that you're going to uh, God is going to manifest himself to you through Jesus Christ and by his precious anointed word I thank God for the hope that he has given us. I thank God this morning for the Holy Ghost. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because through Christ we can do all things. I felt like reading just a touch of Matthew 24 this morning or speaking just a little bit on it. I know that we've sat under it time and time again but don't you know that we're there at the end of it we're right there in the middle of that Matthew 24 how many uh, I was up late the other morning or early the other morning I might say I seen history being made and they were signing the peace treaty over there in Israel I, I saw them sign the peace treaty and this is history being made how many know that I mean, know that some of these things is recorded in the Bible. I heard a minister, I believe the same day I heard a minister get up and say, oh, don't let them kid you around. You know, I don't know the exact words he said, but just don't, you know, there's going to be some of them get up and stand up and say, oh, this is what's spoken of in the Bible and all this. I don't know what's wrong with this man. Uh, he's supposed to be called a, a preacher and all. And, and these things are recorded. 
These things are recorded in the Word of God and teach you that when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. But he was trying to say, don't let this worry you. Don't let this, you know, this is probably not the time. He, you don't know whether it's the time that they're speaking about or whether it's not. Well, what if it is? It may not be the certain time they're speaking of, but what if it is? I've never seen, uh, I've never seen worldwide before it on television where that they signed a peace treaty over in Israel. So we need the Lord this morning because we don't know. But if we hold on to Jesus' hand, if we've got our hand in his, you know there's a scripture that said he's going to hold us by the right hand. A and it's up to us whether we take our hand out of his or not. Because he's never going to let go of you. It's we ourselves who let go. It's we ourselves that drift away. It's we ourselves that gets cold and bitter. It's we ourselves that's always a fault finder and can't have no peace. So if we'll keep our hand, we may not understand it all. You may say, well, I just don't understand about it. It's in the Word. And we may not have the full understanding, some of us. Some of us may have more understanding than others. But if we'll just keep our hands in Jesus' hand and love him and keep his commandments, we are going to make it here. For almost 2,000 years, he has been sending his spirit to the believers that will receive him, that will have inner ear to hear and receive him. Some people, I can understand why some people couldn't believe in that at all. I mean, there's no way that you can see it with a natural eye. You just have to hear the word preached and believe it and know that it's real and receiving. And he's going to come and manifest himself to those that will hear and believe. He is going to come. I mean, we can't see a spirit with a natural eye. So some people have a problem of even believing if there even be a God. But there is a God. There is a God. We have hope through God, through Jesus Christ this morning. You have hope. God sees our broken heart. He sees the tears. He sees what you're going through. He is touched because when you go through things. He's touched by the feeling of your infirmity. He's touched by your hurt feelings. He's touched by your cares. He's touched this morning. He cares for you. There's someone that is bigger than you or I. There's someone that cares. There's someone that cares so much that he suffered. He suffered. I know we hear that sometime, but do we really let it go into us? He, there was someone that actually suffered for you so much that he gave his life and, and shed blood for you and me. He shed blood that we might have life and that we might not be hurting so bad because he's going to come and take his abode within us and he's going to help to share those hurt feelings. He's going to help to share those lonely times. You know, there's some of you that's went through such lonely hours, such lonely, agonizing hours that you felt like nobody knew, nobody cared, nobody understands, but Jesus understands them. He cares. He was right there by you when you was going through that troubled spot, when you was going through that trying hour, when you was going through that lonely time, Jesus was right there. He was your hope. He was your strength. He was reaching out for your hand. He was reaching out to enter into you to carry you through that troubled spot that you couldn't make it through by yourself. Jesus cares for you. And he knows there's a trouble spot coming. He knows there's a troubled place coming. He knows we've been through trials. He knows we've been through testings. He knows we've been through all this because he has allowed his children to go through this. But he knows it's a, there's a time coming that you're going to be really put through a trial of faith, the trial of your life, a trial to see if you're going to stand, a trial to see if you're going to uh, turn against him, a trial to see you're fixing to go through it. And the only way to get through it is to have Christ within you. 
Christ standing up in you. Christ standing up with you. Christ standing up for you. Christ in you. The only way to get Christ in you is to come and fall upon our faces and let ourselves be broken before Him and reach out to Him with everything within us that we got. And then He'll give us that love. He'll give us that companion to reach out for that one that's hurting, that one that's going through something, that one that's going through a troubled place, that one that's going through a temptation that they can't hardly handle, they can't hardly get through it. But Jesus is there that cares for you, and all we have to do is fall on our faces before Him to fall in an humble way. The most humble way that you can get sometimes is upon your knees. That's about as low as you can get unless you fall upon your face. In the altars or out in the dirt somewhere. But we need to fall upon the Lord this morning. We don't want that to fall upon us. We want to fall upon Him and say, God, here I am. I can't help myself. I'm going through these troubled times. I'm going through hours of temptation. I'm going through this. And I need you to help me through it. I'm in such a mess. I need you to help me out of this mess. I need you, Lord, to forgive me of this mess. I need you to help me. I need you to help me to make heaven my home. I don't want my worst enemy to go to hell. I hear it's such a terrible place. I hear it's a place out of the presence of God. That would be one of the most terrible things, not to feel the holy presence of God. I hear it's a dark place. It's outer darkness. I hear it's a place of torment and not peace. But God, forgive us and help us. God, strengthen us. God, we're going through this hour of temptation. We're going through this hour of torment. We're going through this hour when it's bigger, got a bigger pull on me than what. But you know what? It wouldn't have a bigger pull on you if you would get Christ in you. If you'd get Jesus inside of you and let him be the biggest in you. See, the devil wouldn't take up his abode and be the biggest then. It's either Christ or the devil. God has not changed. He's, there's no variable of turning in him. There's no shadow of turning in him. There, he, he does not change. The world changes. The, the uh, generations of people changes. People changes. But listen, God is the same. His word stays the same. From the days of Adam and Eve to now, it stays the same. There's different uh, visitations of the Spirit in different ways that He moves and manifestation of the Spirit. But He is the same. His Word stands sure. His Word is solid. His Word is like a rock. His Word does not move or change. We're going to have to answer to Him just like uh, all the others did back in the days of old. We're going to have to answer to I'm trying to get over there to Matthew 24. Hallelujah. Listen, children. We don't come out to read this scripture. We don't come out to warn you because that we're trying to scare you. We're trying to tell you the truth. We're trying to get you ready. We're trying to get you prepared. Why do you think he sent his spirit back after he died upon the cross and after he ascended up to the right hand of the Father, to the right hand of power of God? Why do you think he went to the trouble to go to the cross and die that, we, that he might ascend back to the Father and then send back his spirit to the earth? Why do you think it was so important? Why do you think he went to all that trouble to do that? Don't you think it was for a reason? Don't you think it must be an important reason that he did that? That he went and he prayed the Father and the Father was to send the Comforter, was to send the promise back to this earth, back to the people. He, the last commandment he told the believers, the disciples, he said, you go back to Jerusalem and you tarry there. He was out on the mountain getting ready to be caught up in the clouds 
didn't he, the last thing he told them to do after all those 40 days he had been with them, after he arose from the dead, he was with them for 40 days. And he talked to them about the kingdom. He talked to them about the things uh, of the kingdom. And he had to leave. He said, it's expedient that I go. It's necessary. It's important. And so he took them out there on that mountain to say the last goodbye that they were going to see him visibly with their eye and he said you go back you go back down in Jerusalem you go back and you tarry there you wait there till you're filled till you're endued with power from on high till I, the promise comes to you of the Father I will return to you he said I will come to you he said my Father and I will come and we will take our abode in you and he tried to prepare them. He tried to get them ready. Well, what did they expect? They might have thought he'd just come walking in the door again. But he didn't do it that way. He sent back his spirit. And it come in that day, on the feast day, on, the, on a Pentecostal feast day, it come in where they were gathered. And that, the spirit of Jesus Christ come into that room where they were sitting as a mighty rushing wind I feel it so strong right now I wouldn't be surprised at nothing if it didn't and, and as a mighty rushing wind the spirit of Christ came into that room we need the spirit of the Lord the young people need the Holy Ghost we need the Holy Ghost you need the Holy Ghost we need because listen the spirit of if you got the true spirit of let me say this. Did you know that some people know God through knowledge? Sometimes we have no knowledge. We, I mean, we have um, no salvation. It's through knowing, just knowing. How many of us have got it in our heart and we have it inside? See, so we can know about Jesus. We can know of Jesus because we've sat under it. We've heard the word on it. We can know. We can know. We can know. But do we have him inside of us? Do we have him within us? See, there's a difference. There's even ministers that can get up and preach by knowing the subject. But do they have Christ in them? Something to think about. Matthew 20, 24 when you first begin reading the scripture, the whole scripture is wonderful. And it tells you many signs in the beginning of the scripture to watch for. And I, I tell you, as you see the, the season coming on, it's the fall season. You feel the chill in the air already, don't you? You feel, you see the leaves already turning. You, you know that winter is on its way. You know fall is just here. Well, you can tell those natural signs, but what about the spiritual signs of his coming? Well, Matthew 24 gives you lots of signs. But it comes right on down to the 29th verse, and he said, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of the heaven shall, <coughs> shall be shaken. Then, two years after, be, during the tribulation, two years before the tribulation, when did he say, then shall you see the appearance of the sign of the Son of Man? In the 29th verse, it says, immediately after the tribulation of those days. Did you know people are going through such tribulation and hard times right now? How many has ever seen the news on TV how all these countries is going through such great troubles? There's people over in some of these countries right now that's dying right now because of the war that has broke out in their country. They're dying because of the lack of food. They're dying this morning. They're going through it. They're seeing their little families. They love their families as well as you and I love our little children. But yet they're going through it this morning. They're going through great tribulation this morning. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. 
and they shall see the sign of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branches yet tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So likewise ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, the generation shall not pass. This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. What generation? These, this generation that sees these signs, that sees all these signs that's come to pass. You read over here in the first beginning. He said that many had come in his name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many, and you shall hear wars. You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. See, the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers places. This is seventh verse, eighth verse. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Have you ever seen such sorrow and heartache, troubles, people going through it, people in, going through sorrows? I've seen so many people people that are half starved to death and then they see all this war see their families torn apart and then we think sometime we've got troubles then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake 10th verse and then shall many be offended now you see this verse right here this is why the Spirit was speaking through me a while ago under the anointing and saying, you know, that we was going to th go through things to see what we was, if we were going to turn against him or turn against the word or turn against right here. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. See, when you get offended or you, you get mad at somebody you go off, that's when you can betray them, can't it? Man, it's not easy. I mean, it's not hard then to betray, is it? Because you're already mad. They've, you've gotten offended by some way or some reason or somebody. And man, you just go off and run your mouth. Maybe things you've kept inside all these years of secrets and things. You'll go off and you'll tell it all. I hope none of us is ever guilty of that. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. See, we see iniquity abounding, and the love of many waxing cold. But he that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom, not this denomination or that denomination's gospel or that other denomination or or this denomination, but it's the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of Jesus Christ shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. 18th verse. Neither let them which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Now I was in a denomination one time for years that they taught that this was uh, the coming of the rapture or the coming back of the Lord. But why would you have to, if you was out in the field, why would you have to run into the house and grab your clothes if it was the return of Jesus? You see what I'm saying? Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. You know, over in Israel, they build the houses, and over in India too, I believe, don't they, Sister Jan? They have housetops where they go up on the housetop. 
and they go up there. Said, hence on the housetop, don't come back, don't come down to get your clothes. Don't take anything out of the house. Why do they need anything out of the house if it's the coming of the Lord? Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. No, I'm going to tell you something. It's an hour you better flee for your life. It's trouble times. It's times when people's going to have to be flee. He, he just said up here, he said, let them which is in Judea flee, run to the mountains. The 16th verse. He just said that above all these others, said not to come down off the housetop to get your clothes. Woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Wonder why. In the day and time we're living in, we wouldn't be able to get our formula to run to the mountains, hardly would we? <laughs> Something to think about, ain't it? But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. See, there's a flight. I've seen some winters here in Oklahoma. I'd hate to have to be fleeing for some mountain, some cave somewhere. <laughs> Man, I want to get there and get established for these things hit. Aren't you glad that God's helping some of you to have the knowledge of this to get somewhere and get prepared? And then some of us were about to let the devil trick us. Some of you's already said, bless God, I'd already been moved somewhere else if it wasn't so and so and so and so. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to the time, to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Did you know that when you turn your news on, there's so many people going through such terrible things right now, I don't see how they're getting through it, Sister Deanie. And except those days should be short, and I want you to notice this verse. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh, F-L-E-S-H, saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. The days are going to be shortened. I'm going to tell you, there's, there's an hour on us. We're going to be saying, Lord, come. Lord, come quickly. Lord, come. Lord, come. There's going to be flesh saved upon the earth. There's people preaching right now. I can't, it's a deception, you see. They are in such deception, and I don't understand how they can see this and believe it and preach it, actually. But because of deception, they can do it. But they're preaching right now that these right here, these special ones are going to be raptured out, and these here is going to be left, and they've already got their names and files who's going to take over when these are gone. Oh my, such deception. This is deception. There's only going to be one coming of the Lord. His spirit has already returned back to earth and people rejecting it. They're saying that it's of the devil. There's already people received his spirit and because they try to live Christ like these others over here is saying uh, it's of the devil, it's a cult. And they're rejecting the spirit. Of Jesus Christ and yet calling themselves a God people if they have refused the son they've refused the father that's what the Bible said and then on down for as the lightning the 27th verse cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west so shall the coming of the Son of Man be for whither soever the carcass is there shall there will the eagles be gathered together Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. You can go over to Isaiah 13 or you can go over to Joel 2 and read about this. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. For they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and with great glory. And he shall send his angels with the sound of a trumpet. Over in Revelations, it speaks to us concerning the trumpets being blown. And there's several trumpets already been blown. And it's being blown. The warning's being blown through God's people, through God's mouth, peace. Being warnings has been sent out. I want to go over to Isaiah. I'm fixing to let you go. 
But children, if I can instill upon your precious hearts to receive one thing today, it's to receive the word of receiving Jesus Christ into your hearts. Those of you that have already tasted of a portion needs a greater portion. How many heard what I said? You need a greater portion. Those of you that, that have just felt a little bit of the Spirit of the Lord, you need a greater Spirit of the Lord. Victoria, Texas, this summer, and they went to a, a tent meeting down there with Brother Barron and at Nixon where these precious people, Sister Amaya and all of them live. And they got in there and received of the outpouring there. And they wanted it. They wanted more. They come back telling their daddy they wanted more. They wanted more. I tell you, when you really get a touch, you want more. I mean, you can't get enough. And we just got a little bit of what there's a whole lot of. My heart goes out to our children, to our young people a lot. Because I know that the times we're in and the things they face, and some of them that goes to public school, what they face, they need Jesus Christ within them in such a strong way. Psalm 63 and 8. My soul followeth hard after thee. And here's the one I want y'all to remember. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Did you know the right hand of God upholds us? I heard Sister Balcom walking in prayer, standing over praying this morning. And she said, Lord, she said, hold my hand. Keep holding my hand. You know, we need to hold the Lord's hand. He needs to hold ours. He'll hold us by the right hand, children. He'll live in you and he'll hold you by the hand. And he sees when you go through disappointing things. He sees when you're misunderstood. He sees it. And you know what? I've always said crying helps. It releases tension. But let me say this. If you'll cry and also pray, it'll do a whole lot more than just relieving the tension. God will answer your prayers. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. That's where hell is. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the thing I wanted you to see was my soul followeth. It means obeyeth. My soul obeyeth. My soul followeth hard after thee. My, thy right hand upholdeth me. Now let's go over to Psalm 73. 73 and 23. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. I'd like to tell a dream that I have told before and I want to tell it one more time. Some of you heard it. Some of you possibly haven't heard it. I didn't understand it right at the time and I, I didn't know that scripture was in the Bible. But he said, I will hold thee I will uphold thee with thy right hand. And I was in a time of, it looked like something coming out. Of, I dreamed that there was something coming out of the heavens. It was flying objects. And when they'd get down so close to the earth, they would start just shooting. I mean, these long things would come out of the object. It was a strange object. I never, it wasn't no airplane or nothing. It was a strange object, kind of a round looking thing. And it'd come down, it'd swoop down, several of them, and they had these long, look like gun barrels come out of there, and they'd start shooting. And there was a young lady, young girl, standing behind me, and I was standing here looking out my door, seeing these objects come down. And I knew it was time to run for cover. I, I fled, I grabbed her by the hand, and I started fleeing. I jumped in a ditch, and these things swooped over and missed me. And as I come up out of the ditch, I began to look around for my friend. And I didn't see her anywhere. But I had to go on. I couldn't stay. So I went on. I come up out of this ditch. And as I come up out of the ditch and I looked, there was a big, wide opening right up here in the earth. It looked like a big, wide 
opening to a tunnel. And I went up there, and the next thing I knew, I was in that tunnel, and I was beginning to, I was starting to walk. I was in the entryway of that tunnel. It was dark. I was afraid. I was frightened. I looked to my left, and here come a general or a, one of the most highest ranks. He had braid on his shoulders. He had, he had medals on his shoulders. I mean, he was of the highest rank in an army type thing, uh, uh, in a uniform. He had this cap on. He had white gloves on. And here he come walking tall, and he was, you could tell he was powerful. I mean, he had, I mean, he wasn't afraid of nothing. And I looked as a child, I wasn't a child at that time, but I felt as a child. I looked up to him as he walked by me, and I was so frightened of this tunnel, this darkness I was in. As he went by me, he didn't say one word to me. He just looked down and he took me by my right hand. And he began to walk with me through that tunnel and the fear left me. There was no longer any fear. This dream come back to me today when I heard Sister Balkum praying, God, hold me by the hand. And as I walked along, I looked up at that man I was walking with and I was just walking with him and he, we were taking great strides down through there and wasn't looking to the right or to the left and I knew as long as I was with him I was safe and man he had me by the right hand and here we were going and we, I knew I looked and I could see a light coming up and I knew that the end the, the end of that tunnel was just about over. And he was going through that tunnel with me to keep all danger away from me. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. When we got down to the end of that op and we, that opening began to come and I seen the daylight coming into that tunnel. I knew I was at the end of that tunnel. He still had me by the hand. We went through and started out that started out through that opening there and as we started out through that opening he disappeared i didn't see him no more he just i didn't see him walk away he just disappeared and i still had that white gloved hand still had a hold of my hand and i could feel his hand i could feel his hand in my hand holding my hand you know what tells me I really believe Jesus didn't leave. I believe this represented Jesus Christ taking care of me through this time of fear and this time I was going through. And when I got down to that entryway, I looked and he was, I couldn't see him no more, but I looked down and I saw that white gloved hand still in my hand. Then I found later on in years, I found this scripture where he said he would uphold us with a right hand. It was so strange. I had such a weird feeling when I looked in the dream. I can still feel that feeling right now. But when I looked and I seen that white gloved hand, I didn't understand the white glove left in my hand. It wasn't just a glove, it was a hand. And I want you to know, children, this morning that Jesus cares for you. You can't go through anything too big or too sad or too horrible that Jesus is not there to help you through it and probably guard you from a lot. It don't have to be that terrible. It don't have to be that sorrowful, but Jesus can lighten the burden. He can lighten all these things. But you're going to have to keep your hand in his hand. If you pull your hand out of his hand, that's the only way that he'll turn loose. Because you see, when he got me to the end of that darkness and the light began to shine, I seen I was to the end. He disappeared. I didn't really need that sight anymore, did I? He's seen me through. He'll see you through. But you gotta have him. You gotta possess him. You gotta you gotta know 
that he's holding you by the hand. You've got to know that he's inside of you, that he can take care of you. I want us to stand. Jesus will come and manifest himself to you. He's here. And I'm going to tell you something this morning, children. If we have feelings of hardness and bitterness, and we find fault with this one and with that one, we need to make a trip into these altars. If people's on their way to hell, we need to care. If we don't care, there's something wrong with our own salvation. If we're going to let them just walk off into the brinks of hell, there's something wrong with us. We need another trip to the altar. We're not saved either. We're on our way to hell too. We've got to have love is what I'm trying to say. We've got to have that love of Christ. We've got to have that compassionate heart. We've got to have like he does to reach out to help that one that's nearest to hell. That one that backslid. That, you know what? He said he was married to the backslider. Jesus said, you know, over in one of the scriptures, God said that he is married to the backslider. He was still tied to him. He still cared for them. He still loves them. He still has compassion for them. He cares whether they go into hell or not. He cares for them. He wants to know that they're all right and doing all right. If you're married to somebody and even when you're separated from them somewhere else, you want to know that they're doing all right. You care for them. We need Jesus this morning. I need Jesus this morning. I want us to close our eyes. Nobody looking around. I want to know if you say, Sister Van Meter, I want you to pray for me. I feel I need, I need to rededicate myself. I need a closer walk. I need more of Jesus this morning. Would you lift your hand and say, pray for me. Bless those hands. Bless that one. Bless that little one, the honest in heart. Hallelujah. Jesus, you see these hands. Bless that one. Lord, there's others that know that, God, I'm asking you to move and help us. Help us to receive of your spirit in a greater way. I want my children and all the young people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want them to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This is a serious time. This is a time of soul searching.